From as long as I can remember, I've identified myself as a dancer. I started dancing at three years old, and then I quickly went into dancing all the time, from 20 to 40 hours a week, all over the United States. I was super fortunate. I was able to claim 15 different national titles. I was able to work with ballet companies, work with choreographers that did music videos. I loved it so much, and it's the only thing that I ever really wanted to do with my life. It was really difficult for me when I got injured when I was about 15. I'd already broken my foot 14 times, but an accumulation of just overuse injuries. The first time I sat down in a doctor's office and they told me that they weren't sure whether or not I was ever going to be able to walk again. When she couldn't do it anymore, it was a huge loss for both of us. A loss of art, a loss of joy, a loss of expression and a real turnaround for like, what is she gonna do for the rest of her life? Here's a kid in a wheelchair for a whole long time, everything's gone, and then she gets involved, crazy involved in the Y, and decides to take the Y Corps bus trip. And I'm saying to her, you can't go on that bus because you're, you know, you're handicapped. Nobody was more worried about it than me, and when I picked her up at the end, I picked up a whole new kid. When I sat down in my first committee hearing, I had no idea what to do. Absolutely no idea at all. I was still seen as the dancer girl. It's not like everyone, anyone thought I really had something to say. And I knew I wanted to give a speech on something. I've never felt more at home with something in my life, because it was the first time that I was able to have a voice outside of someone else's work. At the end of the weekend after I got my first speaking award, I got an offer to be part of our Conference on National Affairs team. And I called my mom and I was freaking out because I had never had anyone see me before as anything other than a dancer. It came to her at a time when she she needed a challenge that was, wasn't physical. I always tell her she found her tribe. And that's when I decided I would be a huge part of the youth and government program. I've been to 24 different conferences and I've started in the Kentucky State program and then I moved now to be on the national level for college youth and government. But I founded the Arizona State University College Youth and Government across the United States. We're doing research projects, helping people get internships, creating new debate forums. We're working on people's campaigns, using our voice and our position, not for political gain, but to expand the thinking of our generation into an active political role active in service. I was on the executive board for Kentucky Youth Assembly as the president of the Senate. I got to stand in a place where people that have been dedicated to make a difference have taken the words of other people and the testimony of others and turned it into something that has brought us up as an entire state. And that is what we're doing here and making it something that has a deep impact. The why has given me a place to be unconditionally myself.